Peco uh, Francesco Bagnaia. <laughs> Peco Bagnaia, the first Ducati rider in history to win four races on the spin. To have one bike with the number one on the, on the racetrack also is nice, and he will defend. Last year I became MotoGP World Champion and uh, my life dream was completed because I won what I wanted to win. I had to change my dream now, so it was, was something strange to, to understand, but now my dream is to continue for many years winning titles. I would like to be one of the greatest of the history. He has uh, the best bike at the moment. When you put the best bike plus the, the best rider, the faster rider, then it's quite very difficult to, to beat him. Surely that is game over for Pekka Bagnaia. He's going to be nearly 100 points potentially behind Fabio Quattararo. <laughs> Lo has robado en mi casa o qué? <laughs> Since I remember, just Mark and Vale have repeated the title. And uh, the level of this year is uh, even higher than last year. The bike of each rider are so competitive, so it will be tough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Marquez for, uh, for his story, for his, his angriness of win, the um, revenge he wants to, to demonstrate and for his talent, for sure. He is the eight-time world champion! Well, it's better not to look at it much. Look at it, right? Yes, I see them every day. Six. One, two, three. Good luck, guys. Good luck, guys. Good luck, guys. Is he back to his best? Is Honda back to its best? Is he going to finally match Valentino Rossi you know, and win that ninth world championship? That's one of the big questions. Of course, it's my dream, and of course, it's my ambition. After three years in a row with a lot of pain, injuries, I mean, uh, thinking uh, was hard, but uh, then everything arrived in a normal way. And I worked this winter on the gym every day because I want to be champion, not uh, because I want to finish race, no. I like the pressure and, uh, and I'm putting pressure to myself and I want uh, to, to fight for the top positions. But uh, you need to be honest to your situation. <laughs> Honda is coming from a very difficult uh, period uh, these three years. For that reason, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here as a top contender. And I don't understand why I was on the main press conference with the two top contenders. We welcome the reigning world champion, Pekka Bagnaia, Fabio Quattararo, runner-up last season. And completing today's lineup is Repsol Honda's Mark Marquez. This is a huge 15 minutes which can determine whether your weekend is good, bad or ugly. Bagnaia though at the moment on course for P1 and the number one does indeed go into P1. P1 is not safe in his pocket. Here we go then. Marquez has latched on to the back of number 23, Enea Bastianini. Enea Bastianini might be inadvertently helping Mark Marquez here take pole position away from Bastianini's teammate. Over the line, Mark Marquez will come. Is it pole? It is! Oh. Incredible! Oh. <laughs> Bastianini is inadvertently helping one of their big rivals, one of Pekka Bagnaia's main rivals for the championship, to pole position, giving him a bit of a half a hand. But why did Anaya do it? Because it was to the detriment of Ducati. But I think in some situations, you don't really have a choice, well, because you're out there pushing for yourself. He's just doing his own thing. Sometimes when you follow a rider, sure, it's up to luck and hoping they don't look behind and close the throttle. But a more skilled way to choose your victim is to look for somebody who you know is fast, but they need to do the lap. They won't roll out of it, and Mark's good at that.
I'm ready. Mark is back in the game, and that spells trouble for his rivals because if Mark's back in the game, then you know those guys are going to have a very difficult 2023. <laughs> No sé, corre más, hoy corre más, no me calláis. El viento. No, el viento no. Yo cuando iba así a ayer y pío menos. La gasolina, tío. La gasolina, La gasolina, ¿no? ¿Sabes? ¿Tu hermano? Sí, es verdad que mi hermano, la de Alex, fue un poco menos de la nuestra. Luego va a estar bien. It's full throttle, lights out, and the MotoGP Sprint era is go here in Portland. Good start from the third place on the grid by Jorge Marti. Mar Marquez has got away round two. Here comes oh, Enea Bastianini, who's fired up from sixth place. He's second behind Marquez. on the inside of Quattararo. Nail-biting action, the two of Prillias almost touched Jack Miller's KTM. Here comes Mark Marquez, two <laughs> for the price of one. 4.5 kilometers left here in the Algarve International Circuit, the last lap of a Tiso Sprint blockbuster. Martin was wide, Martin was wide, a fraction offline in turn five. Oh, die, die, die. He's absolute oh, class. Marquez was going through, and Oliver was off the circuit. The world champion, the number one, is number one in the first ever TSO sprint race. Mark Marquez, <laughs> after a heroic ride from pole position, Marquez takes third place. Bravo. 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 Pero vuelve a pasar lo del año pasado. Yo tengo un poco había, pero la vuelta de, de que he salido. Sí. <risa> bueno, sí. Ah, tranquilo, disfruta. Pero sí, te la había subido. Subito ya. The greatest motorsport show on earth is back on the road after the new MotoGP Sprint proved an instant hit. We're back for the main feature race at the Tiso Grand Prix of Portugal. Yeah, Pico's going to be there, but Mark really wants it. Mark Marquez gets set to start from pole position for a record 64th time. We're all set to go here in Portugal. Mark Marquez got away really well from pole position. Bagnaia gets squeezed by both Martina and Marquez. He had to back out of it there, didn't he? And coming through, fast starting, is Miguel Oliveira. Oliveira briefly, then his home Grand Prix. 
And then we've got an Aprilia around the outside of Maverick Vinales. He's off to a great start. He's trying to go wheel to wheel with Bagnaia and Oliveira. Up to oh, this, now. Oh, I thought it was a push off. I think there was contact. Marquez was super aggressive on the inside of Oliveira Martin into turn number three. Oliveira, though, is back at the front. The crowd are on their feet here in Portugal. You can barely hear yourself think because the Portuguese fans, they're already sensing maybe a historic victory here. Bagnaia has gone for it into the first gear, turn number 13. It was tight, but he made it move in there. Oh, Marquez. Oh, Marquez. He has absolutely slammed into Miguel Oliveira. Marquez returns to the pit box. You can hear some shouting from the fans there, of course. They're not happy with Mark Marquez. The reaction from the crowd was shouting abuse. It was quite shocking, quite shocking to see, actually. Mark Marquez, as we thought he would do, goes straight down uh, to the uh, the pit box of a pretty rare and Miguel Oliveira, and an apologetic sort of gesture as well uh, to the crowd. In the space of what 24 hours, Mark Marquez can go from hero to, to zero. Paco Bagnaia showing just why he's the reigning world champion. Bagnaia wins the Grand Prix of Portugal. En la radiografía que le hemos hecho hay una posible fractura en el primer metacarpiano de la mano derecha. After an amazing Saturday from Mark, Sunday was a disaster. Locking the front, anyone can do it. Taking everyone out, it should be punished. Well, I did a big uh, mistake, and, uh, and yeah, I has been penalized uh, for for that mistake for the Argentina GP with a double long lap. That uh, I'm completely completely agree. After all his good preparation to be ready to fight for the championship, he's injured again. I'm fit, 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 on Sunday night in Portimao, having won the sprint and the Grand Prix, maximum points, and we're all thinking, hmm, this is going to be easy. But nothing is easy in MotoGP. 